Goodbye. Vitamin is Asian-American writer Rachel Kong's debut novel. The story is told through diary entries written by the novel's protagonist, 30-year-old Ruth Young. She writes the first entry on the day after Christmas. She arrived at her parents' home a couple of days before, on Christmas Eve, and has plans to stay through the holidays in order to care for her father. Ruth's father, Howard, is suffering from Alzheimer's disease. In this first entry, Ruth also writes about how she has separated from her fiancé, Joel, after she found out he was cheating on her with another woman. They had been planning to move to a new apartment together, and Joel was in the process of packing all of his belongings into boxes, when he dropped a bomb on her, telling her that he was planning to leave her. In addition to Ruth's diary entries, her father reveals that he has kept his own journal since Ruth was a little girl containing letters that he has written to her, documenting details of her childhood. During her stay with her parents, Howard leaves pages of the journal around the house for Ruth to find, providing precious memories of her youth and family. While Ruth is staying with her parents, she attempts to convince her younger brother Linus to join her, but he adamantly refuses. Ruth and Linus have very different perspectives when it comes to their father and his illness. After Ruth went off to college, her father started drinking and began having an extramarital affair with another professor at the university where he worked. This tainted Linus's view of him, and he still holds on to beliefs that his father is a liar and a drunk. Howard's illness has escalated in such a way that his career as a history professor recently ended because of it. Ruth communicates with her father's teaching assistant, Theo, and together they formulate a plan to get Howard teaching a mock class at the university. They try to come up with a way to make this work without Howard realizing that it is not a legitimate class. When Ruth's mother learns that her husband is planning to go back to teaching, she insists that Ruth be by his side. Ruth becomes her father's teaching assistant for the class, and with Theo's help, devises a plan to get Howard back into the classroom without alerting the dean. This works for a time, up until Ruth and Theo organize a horseback riding trip as part of the class curriculum and realize that the dean is in attendance. Confronted by the dean, Howard realizes the true nature of his return to work. Embarrassed, he refuses to speak to either Ruth or Theo for the rest of the week. Shortly thereafter, Ruth is rummaging through some drawers at her parents' home when she comes across divorce papers signed by both of them, from a couple of years ago. She brings this up to her mother, who seems reluctant to discuss the issue further. She starts to suspect that this is why her mother wanted her to come to stay with them. Ruth realizes that her father was having an affair with a student in his class, Joan. When Joan calls Ruth's parents' house, expressing concern that Howard no longer remembers her, Ruth is furious. Her mother finds out about the situation with Joan and is humiliated that Howard would cheat on her yet again. She locks herself in her room, refusing to speak to anyone for days. Gradually, Howard's relationship with Ruth, Linus, and his wife begins to improve. However, at the same time, his dementia is getting worse and his mental state is declining. This is demonstrated when Howard goes into a rage one day, accusing Ruth of stealing money from him. When he becomes lucid again, he realizes what he has done and weeps uncontrollably. From there, the family proceeds to prepare for the worsening of his condition, baby-proofing the house the same way they did when Ruth was a baby. In November, Joel calls Ruth, telling her that he is marrying Kristen, the woman with who he cheated on her. Kristen is pregnant. Unsure of what to do with this information, Ruth calls Theo. He suggests they go to a bar so that Ruth can relax. They have a drink together and then play basketball in a nearby park until the early hours of the morning. They sit on a park bench together, watching the sunrise over the mountains. In the end, Linus decides to come home for Christmas after all, and finds that the time spent with his family is surprisingly enjoyable. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.